How's it going guys? It is uh, November 9th or 10th or something like that and we are up at the North Farm. Um, we're hauling a few loads of wheat. Not very many, but a few. So, it was minus 15 degrees Celsius last night. Of course, we don't have any power here yet. We're still waiting on that. It was pretty uh, hard starting some of the, some of the uh, trucks here. I do have a Wabasco on this truck. I could have used it if I was more worried. I do believe tonight it's supposed to go down to minus 22 degrees Celsius. Um, so winter is here, ready or not, I guess. But anyways, we need to get a couple loads hauled here and finish this up, wrap it up, and then we're gonna take both the semis back to the south farm because we got quite a bit of hauling to do back there. So obviously, we've already made a load. So let's just fire up here. Things are really sticky because it's cold. We had uh, freezing rain before the snow, which just iced up everything. So we're in here with our blow torches, trying to thaw everything out so you don't bend your choke little cables and so on and so forth. But. This engine is not running awesome. And we run premium gas too. It's still not running awesome. It never has really ran awesome. It's just a little cold right now. I do the same thing if I don't have my coffee anymore. There is a winter uh, package, which we actually have in our shop right now. There's a hose that comes off the muffler, takes it to your car. Or your air filter, I guess, it's right here. Yeah, helps it run better uh, during uh, cold temperatures. But well, Mike, it's minus 15, going to go to minus 20. Isn't that cold? Nah, that's not cold. Minus 35 and minus 40 is cold. All right, we're going to let that uh, warm up for a minute. We're going to walk back here to the generator. Oh yeah, I don't know if I told you, but we had a fan meltdown on us. Uh, it happened like the second day of using it or something like that. It actually literally... See, I put my glove on here. My fingies are cold. It literally melted down. So, we got a new one put on. And uh, they're going to take this fan back, I guess. We got a panel set up here. This will get put in the ground when the ground's not froze. And this is where they're gonna put their power box. And then hopefully the power is gonna run out around that sprayer out there and so on and so forth. Our generator. We close these doors because I knew snow was coming, it still blows in. Look at all the snow in here. Obviously we can't plug in the generator either because we don't have power, but it actually started really good. This has that 6.8, oh, that 6.8 liter John Deere engine. Uh, they start like a champ. So what we do is when we're hauling grain, we just let the generator run all day long. And then when we need to use it, we high idle it because you have to high idle it to get your power. Offload, as soon as the truck's loaded, come back, low idle it. But now we're gonna high idle it. Going low. Make sure you're revved up here. Make sure your tarp is unrolled. Make sure your gates are closed. Oh yeah. Maybe also turn on your auger. Really helpful. I'm like, what am I forgetting? That's a test. You guys passed, by the way. Sure that 
your intermediate, all your other gates to get to your door. You want to make sure you are at your center or you're going to do bad, funky things to your bench. You don't want to do that. Okay, I can't feel my fingers. Whew. So now we're just sitting in the truck, obviously, while it's running, and you always want to watch it. Make sure your auger doesn't quit or you make a big mess or something like that. You run out of gas. You don't know how often you run out of gas. Mike, why don't you just check the gas tank? Well, we got that much gas still left in there. Should be able to get two more loads out. It's funny, because it's always like, because Donovan's hauling too. It's like, who's gonna have to fill up the grain auger? Is it gonna be me? It's gonna be Donovan. It's kind of like winning the lottery, except that's a lottery you don't want to win. <laughs> uh, it's no big deal. We just gotta go over and grab a, a jerry can of gas and throw it in. No big deal, but it's just a little game we all do. Um, how do you know when you gotta move? Well, we got our little uh, PSI. This is uh, how much uh, weight is on the truck. And I'm pretty sure I got to move it around 40, but I can't remember. We're, we're uh, loading for 42 metric ton loads. That's what we would be bringing in. Um, whole truck and trailer and loads going to be around 62.5. It's kind of what we hope for. But again, this is like what my second load or something. I really have very little experience loading these new trailers. These are brand new trailers. Um, as you guys already know that. So once you kind of figure out where the uh, your gauge needs to be on your truck, your second trailer and or your first trailer and then your second trailer, it always takes like a few loads to kind of get in the groove to figure out where you, where all your gauges have to be and then you're off to the races. So we're right now just to, to kind of bouncing off the walls trying to get our weights right. Okay, I'm gonna get up and check that. This is a this is a pet peeve. If you park downwind, see the chaff on my windshield wiper. As soon as I open this door. It's gonna be chaff entering my truck, and that really bothers me. Now you could say, well, Mike, why don't you just park the other direction? Well, that's a very good question. It's just way easier to load and keep an eye on stuff when you park uh, driver's side than if my semi was up over there. This is uh, gauge number two. This is on your first trailer, and you got one over there on your second trailer. All right? All right, yeah, you guys got this. Well, we gotta be close. So typically, you're gonna have the most, less, about the same as Okay, I'll rephrase. As soon as I get out of this wind a little bit, it's done. I would rather carry a little bit more weight on the drive for traction and winter driving than have it spread across the trailer. That can put your drives overweight. You've got to be careful about that. But I like to have a little more weight on my drive. So normally you'll have the most, a little less, obviously. This would be about the same as hopper number two, and then you'll have more over here. All right? All right, yeah, everyone's got that figured. Okay, we gotta get moving. We might have lollygagged a little too long here. We wanna take it to the second hopper. Should be right about there. Run out. You also don't wanna to drive too far. You gotta set a rock or something there. We haven't got that far ahead. I wanna be right about here, so I gotta back up a bit. I won't shut this off. Like I won't actually shut the gate, I'll just shut the motor off. Yep, don't worry, it'll start again. There we go. 
Now we're gonna move to hopper number four. Tricky part is, it's to stop where you want to on hopper number four. So we actually have a rock out there. I don't know if you guys can see that here. I'll zoom in on it. Right there. It's whatever you can find. So I want to stop that on the first axle of that second trailer. Oh shoot, I should have closed the uh, doors. I'll show you. A door there for my gauge is kind of hindering my view. Further. Right there, I think right there. Should be dang close. There's Dono. He's just getting back. Perfect. Well, maybe not quite. Well, it's close. I want to be between the rings. There's a ring and a ring. You want to, you don't want to dump right on the ring. Oh, gosh. It's always hard not to make a mess sometimes. is to keep the auger plump full so that way it doesn't spew any grain out there. When it, when it runs half empty or three quarters full or there's always some grain that it kicks around. Alright. Here's our gas level. Right there. So, uh, sorry about that. I'm not exactly sure how things are going to be loaded here. Uh, I kind of left in a hurry and things kind of piled up and Donald saved the day. He was moving a couple things around and he kind of finished us off. So, anyways, good news is, is we are going to get power soon. Uh, talking with the guy who's lining up, uh, lining up the crew to come in here and put this power in. Super excited, you guys. You have no idea how long I've waited for this. Super stoked. Anyway, let's hit the road. So this is an automatic truck, but you can shift it manually if you'd like to. Um, so that's typically what I do. So if you keep it in D, you see the D that's lit up there? Yeah, drive. Um, it will shift itself. It'll be an automatic or You just pop back on this and you shift up or if you want to go down Drop it down But if you want to put it in manual mode, which is pretty easy to do by just Pushing that in Your D now just changed to M a green M. You see that? Now this thing is completely manual so you shift it the same way as I showed you the first time up and down and you don't have to worry about the truck trying to uh, um, shift for you or, or or downshift for you or you know if you let it lug too much in, in drive, it will shift before it stalls the truck. I've never tried to stall the truck and hopefully I never do, but in manual, it's supposed to stall the truck because you are in manual. Got it, got it, everyone's got it. All right, let's hit the road. And obviously I can't hold my phone when I get onto the highway here once I leave my driveway. So I'll see you guys at the terminal. And just like that, we have arrived. So we call these terminals. Uh, this happens to be a Biterra terminal. Um, there's lots of different companies that have them. G3 has them. Uh, um, Patterson has them. Tons of different ones. Richardson's. Now, how much does a terminal hold? Well, it varies. Some will hold 120 cars worth of grain. And I believe that some can hold up to 320 cars 
So uh, they all vary in sizes. Should we get a tour one day? Maybe. Now it's not uncommon to have a truck ahead of you or a couple trucks ahead of you. So this is the probe and we're gonna get probed. Well, hopefully I'm not going to, but our, <laughs> oh man, our wheat and our trailers are gonna get probed. You can kind of watch how that's gonna work with this guy. Let's see if we can zoom in here. So there is a camera and there is a person running this inside the office. Okay, you see that camera right underneath the light? They're gonna jam that thing all the way down. Hopefully they keep it right in the center. Yeah, a little, maybe a little more center there. Yes, keep going. A little bit more over. Because if they're not dead center, then they can stab the side of your trailer or hopper or something. And I have seen damage from probe operators. All right, I just unrolled my tarps. Uh, that way we're ready to go. We can pull up and uh, get sampled here. When this guy's done. All right, we're gonna pull up. Out. We're good to go. Move up. Okay, sounds good. Let them know that we're good to go. See the lights over there? That tells you if you've gone too far ahead or you gotta back up or you know, you can proceed to the driveway, which is the pit. Let's just jump up here. way down it goes so you're gonna hear a vacuum pretty soon hear that grain going through so they're gonna sample every hopper and it's going right into a bucket inside their office is over there and they're watching us through the cameras and so that way they already know the sample the grade they know what bin this is going to go into inside their terminal and so all we got to do is pull up they're going to tell us when we can dump and then it just speeds up the whole process all right now i'm going to go jump in my truck because it's cold all right we just moved ahead they are sampling the back two hoppers in that back trailer right now. And then we just wait for the green light that tells us to go to the driveway. Got the green light. Now we're just waiting for this guy to dump and offload and then head out. So um, typically you don't wanna to get too close behind uh, the guy in front of you because at normal terminals, I shouldn't say normal terminals, but the majority of terminals, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, when they pull on the scale, they're, they're perfect to dump that back trailer, okay? So they're dump that back trailer because there's a single pit and they're gonna back up, which means their trailer's gonna come out and you don't wanna get bumped into, uh, then they're gonna dump their front trailer. And then once that front trailer's empty, they're gonna drive back on the scale and get an empty weight, okay? And then, um, then they're off to the races. Once they got their ticket, they can go. But this particular terminal, has two places to dump, one underneath the back trailer, one underneath the front trailer, so they do not have to move the trailer or truck, right? They just drive on the scale and they dump and they're good to go. Most terminals have a pit that can pretty much hold a whole semi-load, uh, but this one has a drag. Uh, so uh, we'll just start with the back. You'll see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of giving you a little heads up here because I'm gonna work fast. I do not want to take any extra time in offloading because typically there's people waiting and uh, it's not very respectful. 
So I'm just giving you a heads up. So we're gonna dump hopper number four, get it emptied. We're gonna go to number three, get it emptied. We're gonna work our way to our semi, as you can see he is doing right now, okay? He's on his hopper number four, and then he's gonna jump to three, work his way to two, and then one. And then he's gonna get his empty weight, grab his ticket, and he's gonna drive out, okay? Alrighty. All right, we're about to go on here now. He's getting ready to leave. So when you're driving on the scale, you wanna go very slow. You do not want to accelerate or brake quickly because you got to remember you're driving on a scale, okay? And by doing so, you can knock the scale off. And you don't want to do that. And I don't mean you're going to knock it off its platform, but you can throw out its accuracy. And you want to go so you can get that back trailer on. Got to be fully on the scale. Right about. Just like that, we're dumping. So I don't over inflate my bag. Try not to make a mess. If you make a mess, clean it up. I always do one hopper at a time. So that way I can have control of what's going on. Otherwise, bad things can happen very quickly. Oh, there we go, we're starting to catch up with that drag. Yep, we're catching up. Which means the drag can't keep it away quite as fast. All right, this hopper's empty. Let's just move it over. Put it on this hopper. I'm gonna put it right there. Go back here, close this one. Sorry, sir. All right. One's empty. Air up. All right. All right. I just some dumping the air off the truck. That's for the trailer here. We're on the trailer number one now. Don't worry, we did air up that back trailer if you're wondering. paper and Dono is right behind us there he's getting sampled we're gonna get we're gonna uh, we're gonna head off we're... all right so I got my piece of paper here I'm not gonna show you it's some sensitive information on it but uh, everyone gets a piece of paper it's basically their weight ticket shows them their dockage and uh, all that fun stuff so we came in with about 43 ton which was a little bit heavier than we wanted I was hoping to come in with 42 ton um, but partially that's my fault there right at the end our dockage was 0.7 that's not bad to have for dockage. Uh, our moisture was 11.7. Irrigate was 0 0.03. So irrigate uh, is black kernels, which is a it's a fungus and you can't spray for it. it has something to do with grass, uh, basically like interbreeding or something. Uh, it comes in around your grassy ditches and grassy sloughs and so on and so forth. So uh, that you gotta be very careful with. It came in as a uh, number one, uh, protein was 14.3. Um, but if that ear get, gets too high, you will not go to a two and you will not go to a three. You won't go to a four. You're going to go right to a five, which is feed. So that is a problem. And you got to really watch that. 
But anyways, uh, this this semi, unfortunately, these Wilsons are pretty heavy trailers. Um, I like them for the farm because they're heavy, like they're Borgo, right? They're built like a, they're built like a tank. But the downside is that they're heavy. Uh, my truck is also heavy. I have the 16,000 pound front axles. I got that big uh, bumper up on the front. I have that heavy pinto hitch on the back. It's a heavy spec truck, which means I have 46 rears. Um, so this truck is very heavy. The downside is my total empty weight is uh, 20,500 if I was plump full of fuel and I have big fuel tanks as well, which isn't awesome because you can only take what, 62.5 or 63 uh, total gross load and truck so the heavier your truck is, the less product you can haul, which would make sense. Now the older truck and that rental set of trailers that we have, those uh, Depker Legacies, my older brother actually owns a set of those. They're like one of the lightest set of trailers on the market. Um, also have their pros and cons. And my older truck there is a lot lighter truck. It's still a heavy spec truck, but doesn't have the heavy axles, doesn't have the big bumpers, doesn't have the pintle and all that fun stuff. So I think he's like 18.2, 18,200 or something like that, empty. So uh, he can actually haul more than I can. But uh, for short hauls, it doesn't really, you know, you don't really think about it, you don't, it doesn't add up very much. But if you're gonna be making long hauls and if you were gonna be doing trucking for a living, you would want the lightest truck and trailers possible so that, cause you get paid uh, per ton that you haul. That's how it works if you're a custom guy. I don't get paid anything because I'm a farmer. I get paid when I drop it off and I go in and collect my check and then I realize that the fertilizer company takes them. Right. All right. See you guys later. Have yourself a good one. Adios, amigos.